Studies are what Sierra charts use and you'll probably be more familiar with indicators. So MetaTrader has indicators like RSI, Stochastic, MACD, Moving Averages, Arun Oscillator, Parabolic SAR, whatever it might be. Sierra Charts has the same thing, but they're not called indicators, they're called studies. If you right click on your chart, assuming that you already have done my previous videos and already using my toolbars and my tool sets uh, and my configuration files, if not, go and get those. But if you are, right click on the chart, click studies, and there you go. That's pretty much all you need. Everything that you need is in that list. Well, maybe not everything, but most things are in there. What's not in there is my DTI indicator. I'll cover that in the next session. But in order to find my DTI indicator, you'll need to click this, which is add custom study. And if you are fortunate enough to be a member of the site, <laughs> or if you've got a trial or whatever it is, um, then you can get access to this DTI by just letting me know. And I need your username. So just go to help, go to about, your username is there. Send that to me and I will be able to add it for you. One thing I have noticed from a couple of people is that if you're using the 64-bit version, like I am now, it may not be on the list. Possibly because I only compiled a 32-bit version of the software. So what you'd have to do is close Sierra Charts and open up the other version. Uh, so in your file, uh, in here, in your Sierra Charts installation folder, you've got two Sierra Charts. One says Sierra Chart, that's the 32-bit version, and one says 64 at the end, which is a 64-bit version. It doesn't matter normally which one you use, but to use the DTI, you may have to open the 32-bit version. Anyway, let's come back to this. Right-click Studies, and let's go and add an RSI. So I'm just going to click anywhere here, type the letter R. You could probably type RSI in total. I didn't do it quick enough. There we go. So I'll start that again, RSI, there it is. So I'm just going to now probably double click or click add and it adds it to the graph. And then you either press OK or apply and it will add it to the chart for you. Now, I don't know what you think of bright colors like that, but I don't like them really. Um, it's brightly colored like this because originally Sierra Charts is black, has a black background, not a white background. So to change that, you can go into the settings by double clicking on them and here's your settings so it's an RSI length of 10 let's go for 14 uh, the RSI moving average don't really need that so I'm just going to change that to 1 I mean maybe you do want the moving average of the RSI maybe that would be a useful tool for you but I'm just going to turn it to um, 1 and what I want to do now is change the colors. Look, it's a blue line, I think, there, and a yellow line at the bottom there. It's just a little bit ugly. I'm just going to make them black. So if we go to subgraphs, and here are your lines. So there's four of them. RSI, line one, line two. I think maybe one of them was a moving average. Oh, no, that one is the moving average. So these must be the horizontal lines based on their color. I'm going to click color, change it to black. Press apply, there you go, that's that. And it's quite high, it's quite tall, isn't it? It's taking up quite a lot of space. So I wonder if we can just shift that around. I think everything else is fine, so I can just press OK on this. The alerts side of things, well, that's a programming lesson. If you're looking to get alerts based on when price goes above 70 and then comes back down below 70, for example, we can do that really easily with Sierra Charts. It's great. It normally would take me an hour or two of programming on MetaTrader, but here it's it's like three minutes. It's great. So I'll come back to that another day. But this is the uh, maybe we need to change the average type to well as wild as average. Hmm. Let's just go with that. Anyway, there's your RSI. So let's go back to the other plan, which was to shift the size, the height of this window. And you can see it takes up a lot of room. So if we added another indicator on here, it would start taking over the whole screen. In fact, let's do that. 
let's go and add a MACD. Well, actually, this stochastic is probably something I would use or used to use quite a lot. And you've got a few different options actually stochastic, percentile, slow, uh, stochastic crossover system. Interesting momentum indicator. Anyway, let's just go with a fast, um, a, sorry, a slow stochastic. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It starts, it starts taking over. And let's go and add a MACD as well. Yeah, it just starts to crunch everything up. So it's all just a little bit too much. So what we're going to do is just manually move them. You can just sort of hover towards the top of the indicator or the study. You get this black vertical line. You can just shift them. All right. I don't tend to use that many indicators really. So um, if you want them on the chart for whatever reason, but you don't want to see them, you can hide them. And there you go. Maybe you're using it to calculate something else, you know, as part of a algorithm you're creating. And then that's I do that a lot, and then just hide them in the background. But if you just want to toggle them on and off, you can do that too. All right, and you can shift them around like that. So why is Sierra Chart so good? Well, it's so good because I'm going to show you right now, okay, in very very simple terms. Uh, how you can program your own little algorithm. So I want to put an alert on the chart, an arrow let's say, when price goes above 70 and then back down below it again. All right. In MetaTrader you'd have to set up all your indicator buffers, create all your functions and do all your programming logic, build a shell for an indicator and th there's quite a bit of work that you would have to do. This there is barely any. Now, I'm going to do something called color a bar based on an alert condition so let's go and put that there and I'm gonna give it an alert condition based on this RSI now this might seem like a bit uh, I guess it almost feels like it's a little bit programming but it's not it's actually really quite simple once you get the hang of it which I will cover in another lesson so two candles back and I need to just double check something here uh, this is the I'm going to use SG1 which is the regular moving average 9 so it's just if statements they're really simple So two commands so as an and instead of an if so I want to know whether two candles back the RSI was above 70 and one candle back, it wasn't. And if those conditions are true, I want it to give me an arrow down. And I want to draw that arrow above the high. Uh, how far above the high? Maybe 25% above the high. Let's see what it does. Pool. Okay. <laughs> well, it's certainly given us an arrow in the right spot, but it's drawn it somewhere that we don't really want it to draw it. And I'm going to. <laughs> wonder why it has put it in a minus number uh, so output when condition is true uh, okay so Sierra charts unfortunately has given us information that uh, just threw the spanner into the work there so for some reason it was drawing this it was drawing the arrows in the right place but also not at the same time because this output when condition was true was apparently drawing everything at 1 which is no good to us we don't want it at 1 we want it on the chart 
anyway so we'll change that and uh, you can see tiny little arrows over there so I'm gonna just change the width of those arrows maybe make them a bit bigger there we go and like I've said so where do we want to put them we want to put them well, I was trying to get them above price here but I uh, wonder if it will allow us to just send a little higher use minus one on false we can ignore that okay draw style offset type I've just put number of ticks so 25 ticks above price will do there we go so there we go we have an arrow programmatically drawn when RSI goes above 70 and then back down below again so each time that would have happened we would have been given an alert and it would have popped up and told us that we could have had an opportunity if we wanted to sell there we could have had an opportunity to sell similar situation can be done on the opposite side as well and so it's just little things like that that I love Sierra charts for that takes such a long time to program in MetaTrader compared to this I mean I just had an issue but was able to resolve it pretty quickly um, most of the time once you're familiar with the way that it works you won't have those issues to deal with so uh, it's so so simple to work with um, and yeah we could say goodbye to programming in C uh, C++ or MQL which MetaTrader likes us to do we can actually build our own algorithms quite quickly here test them see if they work and then send it to a programmer to build into an automated trading system think of the time that that saves you think of the flexibility it gives you to build your own hypotheses for trading strategies and test them properly rather than spending a fortune building indicators and then eventually getting around to building an expert advisor anyway so that's what attracted me uh, I hope it's also good for you that shows you how you can get into your studies how to change some of the settings and how to well, eventually get around to programming some of your strategies as well right in the final video for this session we're going to take a look at DTI uh, how to get it on the chart how to get it working and what some of the stuff means for you all right we'll see you in the next one